Hello everyone, welcome to the part 2 of S3. So in the last video, actually I was faced, I was, I was having some uh, technical issue, so that video got uh, uh, disturbed in between. So this is the continuation part of the same video. Now the uh, question which we were discussing about, that is question on S3. The last question was that what will be the storage class available on Amazon S3. So we were discussing about the different classes available for the uh, S3 bucket. There are four different class. One is like S3 standard, one is S3 standard infrequent access. Third one is reduced redundancy storage and last one is the class here. So uh, in the condition of a continuous input and output request of an object or a file, you will show, you'll go, you'll go for the S3 standard. Now let's say there are requirement where continuous uh, in and out is not required but a specific point of time there is a very heavy load to access the file. So uh, let's understand this by an example. So let's say we have a week uh, time where four days of week there is a very less traffic but let's say in Saturday and Sunday huge amount of traffic is there. So to get to uh, uh, to met this kind of requirement you can go for the S3 standard in frequent access and what will be the benefit you will charge less same way reduce redundancy storage is the step lower than infrequent access same way if you have a very low uh, uh, redundancy of an object very low throughput requirement of your file you will go for the reduced redundancy storage and the fourth one is amazon class here so let's say if you have a requirement to store it completely onto archival where you are going to ask for the data once or twice in a month or a week in the way if you wanted to achieve this kind of requirement you should go with amazon glacier i'll give you an example where i used amazon glacier in my production data so i am having a code of big data technology where i'm uh, processing the data using apache spark and kafka some amount of data which is processed we are keeping keeping on amazon glacier to archive that which are the data which we are not using at the very frequent level this kind of data we have archived onto Amazon Glacier so that the billing will be very less. We, are, we need to access this in a once or twice in a year. So for this kind of requirement you can go for Amazon Glacier. To understand this class in more depth you, will, you can visit the link which I have provided onto that where you will find the costing part as well as the throughput part of each and every single object storage and the retrieval. Now let's look at the S3 service available onto AWS. So this is our AWS console page. This is my S3 service. Let's go and look into that. As you can see, this is the S3 page where you will have your bucket name present. Again, bucket name is alias of a folder. You can create multiple folders by clicking on this button like create but bucket and you can create a bucket. This bucket is defaultly created uh, while I was doing one uh, research onto EMR service available of AWS that is an elastic map reduce so I was doing a code for uh, uh, handling a big data project for Apache Spark and Kafka at that time it is defaultly close, uh, clear, created so let's try and look into it what is that so if you click on that bucket you will find multiple folders on top of that where you have the permission to select it give the permissions that who all can be able to permit that management and the access points let's have a quick look one by one if you go to the property part you will see the versioning server access logging and static web hosting part and the other few options available on top of that you can look into that in a different manner if you go to the permission you can have that option that whom all can be permittable whether to block it for public whether a specific group of people can be uh, can be accessible to this folder and you can set your permissions from this option so if we have account controls list we have bucket policy and then another options are management let's say if you wanted to create a replication of that code your file you can do that you have the feasibility to analyze that metrics and inventory there are n number of options available which you can play around 
the accessibility currently i don't have any accessibility created for this specific puppet but you can create your access point so that you your aws cli using your aws cli or sdk amazon s3 rest api you can create on top of that and this folder can be accessible to your code so let's look into this folder which i have created we'll see what all things are there So these all are I guess the folder structure automatically got created when I have created my uh, uh, um, when I created the AWS EC2 instance or EMR instance. So what we'll do is I'll quickly upload a file for you so that you will be able to understand how it, it, it is working. I am into my bucket now. I have one folder already created. What I will do is I'll upload a file straight away from here. So let me select a file and let me upload it. You will have this window once you click on the upload button. I have uploaded a very small file called world.txt. We'll quickly go and check what are options available. While uploading itself, you have the option to set the permissions. So if you wanted to give the access to read, write and whatever it is to user ID, let's say if you wanted to add an account, you can add it add that account from here so let's say if you are working on a team where you are having five developers and everyone is having alias account created on aws you can add that five account over here so only that five account users can uh, be able to access the file which is uploaded by you now here are the standards which we discussed about what which kind of uh, class you wanted to use whether you wanted to use it standard IntelliJ Tree, standard AI that is our infrequent access which we discussed about Glacier highly archival data with retrieval time ranging from minutes to an hour Glacier deep archive which is a step lower than Glacier even you can uh, have that a uh, very deeply uh, uh, archived your data so uh, for 1 dB of data, a month charge will be of only of $1 if you are going with the Glacier Deep Archival. So this way you can set the class for which, which you wanted to store that and then permission and then you have to just click upload. So once you will be uploading that file which will be seen here, here you will have that file prepared over here. Okay, so let's look into the actions available here. If you click on the options and the X or the actions, you will find the overview of that file. And this is the object URL which I was talking about. So if you go into that and if you see, you will have that object URL present which you can use to download this file. It will be like kind of an API URL given to you and you can be able to access that by using this link. So this is a very uh, basic level of understanding about the S3 uh, service as well as I tried to cover few points by which you can be able to attend the uh, questions which were asked on top of S3 service available on S3 AWS. So I have also as I mentioned I have also created one practical session video which the link is already provided. You can go to that link and you can understand that how practically you can implement that. Thank you so much for joining me on this video. Have a nice day.